I had told you, I've never had a substance abuse problem. I've never been in prison. Nobody in my family's ever killed each other. What the fuck could I talk about? But this started part of my therapy because I'm wrestling crazy. In the 80s, Vince takes everything and opens it up. At the same time, he starts presenting a silly product. He's the, opening the, it up, but he's closing territories and it, it, taking away any other I mean, option. I mean, I, well, exa well, you uh, could blame that as much as any, you could blame that as much as you blame Vince Russo. There were Why don't you hate McMahon? Well, I, I do, but at least he's good at what he does. Terry Taylor calls me on the phone and says, I said, hey, TT. And he said, well, I got bad news. I said, well, I thought somebody, you know, died or something. He said, we got to let you go. <laughs> well, I said, well, I was about to call and ask for a raise. I guess we're really far apart, aren't we? And I drive from fucking Louisville. I'm never late. I'm the first one there. I'm one of the last ones to leave. Dutch rides with me. Both of us were one of the last ones to leave. I've never no-showed, never shown up in the condition not to perform. Always done my best, sweated my fucking ass off. You think I'm not 100% behind this shit? So the next day on the internet, where it had said an unnamed TNA source said that Jim Cornette was fired for screaming at Vince Russo and why are you pushing Eric Young? Next day, unnamed TNA source says, no, it didn't happen. She wouldn't put her name on it. And he sends me an email says, is this what you wanted? I said, no, no, that's not what I wanted. The fucking douchebag won't even put her name on a goddamn retraction that you said she'd have no problem giving. Why aren't you, know, you booking for Ring of Honor right now? Because they drove me insane. Joe, I'm going to apologize right now. We've always had a good relationship. You've always been a gentleman to me. But I'm finally, I'm just going to tell everybody what the fuck happened because I'm just sick and tired of fucking reading about it on the internet. I'm the one who wrote the proposal that Sinclair Broadcasting ended up buying the company mm -hmm. off of. Now, I wrote a proposal based on how that Sinclair Broadcasting could work together with Ring of Honor and air a television program on their stations and everybody could mutually benefit. They seemed to like it so much, they made an offer and bought the whole freaking fucking company. But, and we can go over this point by point and piece by piece as we go along if you want to, but they basically didn't follow through on <laughs> any of the proposal. There is a world somewhere in this universe. I'm not sure where it is, but there is a world somewhere where it's more valuable to have the Super Smash Brothers on the card than Mike Bennett and Matt Hardy. But it ain't on this earth, right, if you want to make money. I gotta backtrack a minute, but the story will be worth it. You're getting an exclusive here. I'll tell you what, in June of 2012 is when I think I finally mentally checked out. The fucking company is about as popular as crotch rot, uh, you know, with all the PR nightmares and, and the fucking budget situation and the fucking production and just everything is, I'm, and I'm just, I'm waking up mad every day. I've got to get away from these fucking people. I'm going to die. I actually broke down in fucking tears and said that this fucking thing is over, it's done with, it is fucking destroyed. Jim, we have almost three months to make it look good, and we know if we don't, you'll never let us forget it. All right, motherfucker, my old friend, my partner that's turned on me. The reason why Adam had been let go as Booker is because he had finally sent Carrie an email with the opening line, first of all, fuck Sid and Ross. So right there, <laughs> that pretty much, you know, but it was at that point and I could identify with it. And then the people bitched, well, that ain't a pay-per-view card. What, what's it supposed to be? It's supposed to be a fucking house show card. And two weeks out, they say, let's do a pay-per-view. Show them we can. Okay, I don't know if people are going to accept this as a pay-per-view card. Well, it doesn't matter. So then I said, well, how dare Jim Cornette book this fucking shitty card for a pay-per-view? And he was going to pitch me over the fucking table. You may have seen the clip. I don't know. The, the look on your face indicates you didn't see the clip. But he, Jay grabs me and runs me and I sit the, and take I it bought a the pay-per-view. It didn't work. He steps on a power strip, an $8.99 power strip from Home <laughs> Depot. And everything goes bad. Mark Davis, the editor, goes, what the fuck? He's watching all this bank of monitors where we're record, rolling all this stuff onto, not tape, but recording recording it for, for later television, everything goes black. I'm like, motherfucker, get out from behind the fucking, what are you doing? You club-footed moron. Regardless of whether you like this little prick or not, he has alienated everybody. Nobody wants to do business with him. Nobody wants to talk to him. Nobody likes him. And he's fucking shit up. And they're saying such stupid things on the fucking internet and not taking responsibility for all these fuck ups. And I swear I'm not making this up. I, would, I wish I was. Go Fight Live forgot to bring microphones. The camera falls in half. 
the lens falls off, the, so the body of the camera goes back and the lens goes forward and the only thing that kept both of them from hitting the ground were all the cables attached to them hung over the cameraman's shoulder and he was able to catch everything, right? So our cameras are literally falling apart. Yeah, somebody get that fucking, where is that fucking, I look over and there he is, it's dark in the room, right? I said, you, you're a fucking idiot. You fucking put us out of the pay-per-view business, you stupid son of a bitch. I knew this was going to fucking happen. We're never going to do another one of these again because nobody will ever fucking buy it. So fuck you, you fucking idiot. First row, $60. Second row, $50. Third row, $40. General admission, $20. It was cheaper to get into fucking SmackDown than to get into the fucking ballroom at the Charleston Civic Center. I said, I said, are you out of your mind? And we went to Ross and Ross like, Adam is a cancer. And I just don't know it. He said harsh things about me and he was going to punch me and he was going to do this and that. The merchandise weasel was able to dictate the color commentator on a program airing on 60 or 70 something broadcast television stations across the country because he's a pussy and couldn't get over the fact that three years beforehand a guy in the wrestling business had said he wanted to beat the fuck out of him because he was a prick. So fuck you, Ross, you fucking pussy weasel. I'm in a building that I didn't want to be in, just having done a television production that I was embarrassed to be associated with. I told everybody what was going to happen and they didn't listen to me. I've got an ambulance pulling up to the back door to carry a potentially paralyzed wrestler off to the fucking hospital. And I'm the one in charge of this fucking thing because nobody else stuck around to help me. You fucked one of the boys. You fucked the television program. You fucked our plans for your own selfish pussy fucking purposes. And I still have a hole in my garage wall that was put there by this fist when I heard the fucking news because you're a fucking little prick. If everybody thought, shit, I gotta take care of the life I've got because after this is over with, I'm gonna be a box in the ground, there'd be a lot less fucking murder and a lot less religious idealism. It's a fucking circus! You fucking idiot! It's the fucking circus! They've been around for 150 fucking years! It's a goddamn rite of passage in the United States of America to go to the circus! Everybody goes to the circus! What do you want us to do? Book a dancing fucking bear? I've found that everybody in the wrestling business is crazy. Either you're crazy so you get into the wrestling business, or you get into wrestling business and the crazy people you have to deal with make you crazy. But sooner or later, everybody in the wrestling business is crazy.